Where were you before? M D. Oh, I know where. You are making that money. M4 has deservedly become a popular platform thanks to cheap processors, boards, and DDR4 memory. But M5 is not the same. This time around, AMD decided not to be the good guy and rip off their fans. They applied the Intel's practice this time. First, they sell only top-end boards and overclocked processors with the X index. Then later, everything else. A year ago, the new DDR5 memory would cost a fortune, so the Ryzen 7000 series release was for the rich. Ordinary users were not really excited about the AM5 socket and went on building their PCs on AM4 or better yet, bringing that money to the competition. Only recently, inexpensive A620 boards began to appear in market. We have tested one. It can handle a 6-core Ryzen CPU and can overclock RAM with no issues. Now we got on our hands a potentially better processor for AM5. It was supposed to be an exclusive for China, but it seems to be so no longer. The Ryzen 5 7500F. 6 cores, 5 GHz, no iGPU to pay for, and as a result, its price is $170 or so, a third less than the 7600X. Today, we will compare them and find out if it's worth overpaying for the supposedly better 7600X. This is MK. Let's test the most affordable AM5 CPU, the Ryzen 7500F. What kind of processor is it? Apparently, this is the final result of the Ryzen 7000 series chip binning. Two cores out of eight are disabled, the integrated GPU is disabled as well, and the clock speed is cut to 5.05 GHz. This, while the 7600 can boost up to 5.3 GHz and the 7600X up to 4.45 GHz, and both of them have an iGPU. We have already talked about the binning in one of our videos, be sure to take a look. There is simply no point in making a processor worse than this one on AM5. Of course you can disable 4 cores out of 8, but who needs a 4 core CPU with DDR5 memory and expensive boards? So the 7500F is and most likely will remain the lowest possible entry point to the AM5 platform. Now this is a fully finished product made on the B2 stepping. It supports all instructions, RAM overclocking and is overclockable itself. I doubt that AMD would use high quality dyes in such a processor, so chances are this CPU is not fit for good overclocking, but we'll check that out too. As expected, there are no issues with memory overclocking under the new version of BIOS. The processor has no problems working with fast RAM at 7200 MHz. There are no anomalies in speeds and latency. Let me remind you, although we are running our test on the B chipset, the memory can be overclocked even by the cheaper A620 chipset. Let's go for benchmarks. In the CPU-Z benchmark, our 6-core test subject scored 700 points in single-thread and about 5600 in multi-thread. This result is as close as possible to the 7600X engineering sample, which we tested last time. And this is again expected. The clock speed is the same, 5.05 GHz, and the B1 and B2 steppings do not seem to differ in terms of the architecture. At the same time, the 7600X turned out to be 5-7% faster. This is exactly the increase given by the extra 400MHz of clock speed. In the 7-zip test, the 7500F is again very close to the engineering sample, with a result of 97 GIPS. The 7600X is slightly faster, 100 GIPS, and this is achieved thanks to the slightly higher frequency capabilities. The more expensive processor can boost to 4.45 GHz, while the 7500F is forced to be limited to 5.05. In Cinebench, the result is once again similar. The 7500F and the pre-released 7600 go neck-to-neck, -neck scoring 14,000 points in multi-thread, and the 7600X is only a few percent faster, 15,000 points. The difference is noticeable only in single-thread, 10%, which is achieved thanks to the better frequency boost capabilities of the more expensive CPU. The long stress test in Cinebench also shows the full parity of the 7500F and the engineering sample both in clock speed and TDP. Both consume up to 90 watts boosting to 4.9 GHz, that is, by default, they do not use the turbo boost to the maximum in demanding tasks, but at the same time, they do not overheat either. But the 7600X with a couple of hundred megahertz more is faster, but at the same time, it heats up to 95 degrees, consuming 15 extra watts. 
And the last synthetic test is 3D Mark, which shows the processor performance in games. It's easy to guess that the 7500F and the pre-release 7600 again have a parity of 9700 processor points. And again, the 7600X is only slightly faster. It scored 10,100 points. What conclusions can we make here? Firstly, you can safely go for an engineering sample. The B1 and B2 steppings are really identical at the same frequencies. Secondly, overpaying $60 to $70 for the 7600X in order to get a 5% performance increase in productivity tasks while also increased heating, in my opinion, is pointless. Now let's see what's with the games. All tests in games were carried out as usual at the maximum graphic settings but in Full HD and with ultra low performance upscaling so that we do not bottleneck on our RTX 3080 Ti, thus being able to see a more relevant result on the CPU. And let's start with Cyberpunk. This game is CPU intensive and the 7500F was again on par with the engineering sample, rendering 117 FPS on average. Both of them boosted to 5.05 GHz and maintained them, and the power consumption was about 65 to 75 watts. The 7600X, however, is noticeably hotter. It consumed up to 90 watts, but still sometimes dropping frequencies to 5.3 GHz. As a result, the more expensive processor is faster by as much as 3 to 4 percent, which in real gameplay, even with an FPS counter on, will be difficult to notice. In the sunlit single-threaded Far Cry 6, the result is identical. The 7500F is equal to the pre-release 7600, but the 7600X this time was able to beat them by almost 10%. Here it boosted to the full 5.45 GHz, and taking into account how much the Far Cry games love single thread, this gave a noticeable difference. However, this is only applicable to the benchmark results, whereas running through the tropics with a flamethrower, you will hardly notice the difference between 110 and 120 FPS. Let's head west a little and visit a racing festival in Mexico. Forza Horizon 5 is well optimized for multi-thread. The benchmark results here demonstrate perfectly well what is a margin of error. The 7500F turned out to be only one frame slower than the 7600X, but the engineering sample lagged behind by as many as 8 FPS. However, in relative numbers, this is only 3-4%, which is much less than the margin of error that Windows 11 can make by trying to update in the background while you're gaming. Let's move on to one of the most beautiful games of our time, a medieval journey with rats and magic. There is no built-in benchmark in a Plague Tale Requiem, so the marketplace location has traditionally been selected as the location for our tests, as it is extremely demanding. As a result, there is no way to determine which processor produced which gameplay unless labeled. All of them rendered 70 to 100 FPS and all stuttered when turning the camera sharply. And finally, the most demanding game of our time, the PC port of The Last of Us. The situation here is the same as with the Requiem. There is no benchmark and in real gameplay, the difference of a couple of percent between all the three processors is completely invisible. On top of that, the 7600X here, same as in Cyberpunk, gave up. It consumed 95 watts and dropped the clock speed to 5.3 GHz. Neither the 7500F nor the engineering sample behaved like that. Both of them stably boosted above 5 GHz. The conclusions are obvious. The 7600X is not a good pick as of now. Both in productivity tasks as well as in games, the difference with the 7500F is marginal and will not be noticed in practice. But for the $60 to $70 that you can save on it, you can get an extra SSD or a more powerful GPU or a beefier motherboard. In fact, AMD just ripped off the impatient fans who didn't want to wait and got a formally better processor with an expensive board at the start. What's more, the company repeated this a second time, releasing a little later the regular 7600, which differs from the X version by some completely insignificant 150 MHz, but costs about $20 less. And having ripped off the fans once again, AMD has released the final version, the cool and fast 7500F, and with an affordable price too. Of course, you can also get an engineering sample with the same performance and even cheaper than the 7500, but this is a more difficult task, requiring an intermediary who would get it to you from China. Perhaps some will say that the 7500 is an F processor. It doesn't have an iGPU, while the 7600 does. What should I do if I don't need a dedicated GPU, or if it fails? The answer is simple, the GT210, which has drivers for Windows 10 and costs some $5 to $10 as used. 
and for the $70 that you saved, you can find a used graphics card that is several times faster than this iGPU. Then we also tried to overclock the 7500F to the level of the 7600X. But as expected, the silicon dyes used here are not pure enough. This processor is most likely the worst of the rejected dyes, and it only works stably at 5.2 GHz. Even the engineering sample from two years ago managed to hit some extra 100 MHz. So either we just lost the silicon lottery, or this is a way for AMD to get rid of the worst dyes they have. But I think it's already clear that if the difference from 5.45 GHz in the 7600X is at the margin of error, then the boost of the 7500F to 5.2 GHz simply doesn't make sense. And the test demonstrated perfectly well. Both in CPU-Z and in 7-Zip, the processor has increased its performance by 2-3%, becoming even closer to the 7600X. But in Cinebench, the 7500F was even able to slightly outperform the 7600X, all because we locked the clock speed to 5.2 GHz, which caused an increase in power consumption by 10 watts, which in turn caused the temperature to exceed 90 degrees. But the 7600X in this test had free clock speed, and when reaching 95 degrees, it had to drop the frequency to 5.15 GHz, which explains why it lost to the 7500F in the benchmark. In games, the situation is similar. Overclocking to 150 extra MHz makes the 7500F a lot harder, but only a little faster. For example, in Cyberpunk, the increase was 5 FPS, or about 3-4%. In The Last of Us Remake, it is again impossible to see any difference unless specifically indicated. However, this doesn't apply to power consumption. As we have said numerous times, overclocking modern CPUs, including the Ryzen 7000 series, is pointless. The performance increase is marginal, but the power consumption and heating get a lot worse. Therefore, we suggest approaching it from the opposite direction, undervolt instead. This will lower the voltage and consequently the power consumption. This is done in just two clicks in the BIOS, and lowering the voltage curve by 30 points produced the following results. The 7500F in the Cinebench R23 test uses turbo boost at maximum, but the power consumption has decreased by 10 watts, which is why the processor heats up to only 75 degrees. For the record, this is 20 degrees less than the stock 7600X, while the latter is only marginally faster. True, the performance increase is not a lot. An extra 100 MHz increased the scores by less than 2%. As a result, we can say that the 7500F is good as is. It is cool enough and doesn't lose performance even in demanding tasks, so undervolting is not necessary for it, unlike the 7600X and above processors. Overclocking it doesn't make sense either. The performance gain is scanty, while the heating increases quite noticeably. So you can get a 7500F even for a simple A620 board, this will be enough to reveal 99% of this CPU's potential. Only on the third attempt, having made as much money as they could off of their loyal fans, AMD released a truly affordable processor for AM5. The 6-core 7500F will easily run games even with the RTX 4080 level cards. At the same time, it's cool, cheap enough, and can overclock memory quite well. The 7600 and 7600X are not a good choice. They are marginally faster than the 7500F, but significantly more expensive. And the iGPU is not worth it. In fact, the 7500F is the best processor for AM5 at the moment in terms of price to performance ratio. And this is a good option for those who do not want to bother with trying to get an engineering sample and yet save a buck. This was MK. My name is Mikhail Krashen. I'll see you again. Bye.